come back to March into Madness on CBS 5. Well, if you're driving by uh, Rosie's Bar last night in Syracuse in the area of Tipperary Hill, you might have seen this in the fading light. Honk if you're mad at Mellow. Great, oh, way, to, great way to take out some frustrations. Uh, we didn't get an official count of how many honks there were. <laughs> but I tell you this, if that sign had been posted, say, 2, 2.15 in the afternoon yesterday, there would have been some major honkage going on. Mm, uh, people, because people were hot. Yeah, I'm was, glad I didn't drive by Rosie's last night. Uh, yeah, so, that. yeah what would, so what would you have done? I mean, honk if if you're, if you're mad at Mellow, I mean, look, everybody's frustrated that this is going on, and you know, but uh, you know, I, I think there's a line there, Matt, and I think somebody drove by that line at about 100 miles per hour. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know what <laughs> I love about the sign? They're, and they're honking while they're driving uh, by the line. You know what yeah, I love about basketball. Brent Axe is that he starts the, his own interview. Yeah. For the people who were supposed to be interviewing him. That's Brent right. Axe of On the Block. He's on 1260 The Score, uh, an afternoon radio show that simulcast on Time Warner Cable Sports, and we're lucky to have you here. Let's start by talking about Fab Mello, sure. and let's talk about what those players said today. We heard them in the news conference. We heard them uh, very, very buttoned up, is the way that I would describe it about them. They said all the right things. They, they, they can't know. To, they, they can't right. know yet well, how, how they're going to react. Right. They've, they've had had a lot of practice at saying all the right things this year because they've gone through mm -hmm. so much. True. Now, here's the difference. This is on the court. You can't get away from this. All the other things this team has gone through this year, guys, their sanctuary has been that court. Yeah. You're going to get on that court. It's hard to not notice the absence of a 7-foot, 244-pound center in Fab Mello. So oh, is that all? They kind of went through the <laughs> motions of talking about, yeah, we got to move on and we've got to play without them and you know all the same stuff you hear this time of year. But this is directly related on the court. They can't deflect this off like they have in the past. And one thing I think Coach Jim Beheim and his staff are very good at, though, is making every game experience identical to the one before. Yes. You know, so even the home games when they stay at the hotel and all, all that, that's all designed for moments like this. So it just feels like, oh, it's just another game. In a way, but this is the NCAA tournament. Right. You've got different media there. You've got a different circumstance. We know what's on the line here. So at least... You know, look, there is not a team that's more prepared to handle adversity or anything you can throw at these guys. I mean, you could have told Jim Beheim that Godzilla walked through that press conference today and he wouldn't have batted an eyelash. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. all that training... For fear of being sued for defamation, <laughs> right. potentially. It's well, all got to pay off now. Well, yeah, that moves to the next question, Brent. You know, obviously, Fab not in the starting lineup. Who takes his spot? Is it Rakeem Christmas by Kida? Even James Sutherland, potentially, if you go small? It's Rakeem Kida. It's by Christmas. It's a combination there of you the go. two. And, you know... Uh, we were talking about this. Let's say you run into an Ohio State down the road here. Well, that's 10 fouls that you've got to throw at Jared mm -hmm. Sollinger. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, no one replaces Fab in terms of this guy does his job. On a very deep team, he's the most indispensable player there because of what he does and the presence he brings in the middle. And it's how he anchors that zone, Nico. By what he does in that zone, it allows the people ahead of him to be more aggressive, take chances. Because, oh, hey, we got this big fella back right. here in case we miss. That's gone now. So it, it is a combination of those three and everybody else. It also seems like against a smaller team like UNC Nashville, right. you're going to see Sutherland with Fair in there maybe, or three guards, which we saw a little bit in the Big East. That was interesting right? to hear Beheim say that today, Matt, that, you know, be prepared for anything. He said we could go three guards. He did not, you know, downplay anything with this team. And this is a guy who says himself all the time that he does things the same way. So I think it'd be smart to do that. I think it'd be smart to be open to press more on defense. You do what you do. You got here for a reason. Fab Mello doesn't blow this whole thing up, but you do have to go outside the box a little bit once you get further down the road. You know far more about this than probably a lot of people who are watching right now. I want to know what's on that bracket. It's <laughs> on this bracket right here. You got Kentucky. That, 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 that was confidential until just a little while well, ago. Well, thanks, wasn't Michael. It? You know, I'll just tell everybody. <laughs> Listen, so don't, everybody don't can win their office pool. Don't bring it to the program unless you're willing to share with the all The winner's class. right here. Here's my final four. I've got Kentucky, Michigan State, mm -hmm. Kansas, mm -hmm. and. I still have Syracuse in the Good final. for you. I still Good think they're going to get there. And I'm glad I you asked, it. Michael. I had a statistical analysis guy, numbers guy, on my show today. And the two big upsets that I picked, Texas over Cincinnati, Belmont over Georgetown. I like the Belmont one. The two most statistically possible big upsets in the tournament. So wow. if you don't believe me, believe the numbers guy. Come the on. numbers do not lie. But uh, you it's really think Syracuse science. can still get there? I do. I, I I, don't, I you're think, not just saying that because you're no. from here. You're, you like the orange. Look, the road gets a lot tougher now, but they still can get to the Final Four. They're deep. They're talented. They can beat the teams in front of them here. I'll say this, though. They better avoid Wisconsin at all costs. That's mm. the team that can knock Yes or no, if they do win it all, if they do win it all, does Jim Beheim retire right afterwards? No. No. 
Thank you, Brent Axe. Definitively no. Thank you, Brent Axe. We'll take a look at the afternoon games in Syracuse's bracket. You heard it here first, folks. Kansas State and Southern Miss, that's 1240. The winner going on to play Syracuse or UNC Asheville. Of course, we all think it's going to be Syracuse. Wisconsin and Montana battling at 210 on TNT. Vanderbilt and Harvard go at it, also on TNT at 430. Then there is Syracuse, third on the list, approximately 3 o'clock, 310, a tip-off on True TV. And we have details on where you can find True TV on your cable box coming up a little bit later in the program. Much more still to come. We'll go back to Pittsburgh for more on SU's big matchup tomorrow as we march into madness. It continues here on CBS 5.